My name is Eileen Wasso. I'm the Senior Advisor for Early Childhood Education at Centronia, and I'm glad you've decided to look at some of the highlights from our dual language conference that we held in June this year. The conference is divided into three parts. What the research tells us is important for dual language learners, what we can learn from assessment, and what we can really pull together from uh, the assessment, what that tells us in terms of working with children in planning and developing really age-appropriate curriculum. We envision the Institute as a place where we can build a community of learners who are excited about asking questions, finding answers about how to become better teachers or practitioners, and how to best support children and their families. In the coming years, we hope the Institute will be a place where you will come to share your ideas and learn about what's happening also in the field of education policy. El Instituto de Centronía es la creación de la fundadora de Centronía, Vivi Otero. Imaginamos al instituto como un lugar donde podemos construir una comunidad de aprendices que están emocionados sobre hacer preguntas y consultar las respuestas acerca de cómo convertirse en mejores maestros y cómo apoyar mejor a los niños pequeños y a sus familias. En los años próximos esperamos que este instituto sea un lugar al cual ustedes vendrán para compartir sus ideas y aprender sobre lo que está ocurriendo en el campo de políticas e investigación de la educación preescolar. In the next section, you'll see Mei Ling Hoa do a presentation on language development and second language acquisition. They're going to be creating a foundation, a base of knowledge that will later transfer to a second language. So that's what we, we sometimes call the dual iceberg, where one knowledge is transferred into the second knowledge. So it's very important to emphasize this because we, we all work with families and parents and what we want to establish is that, yes, please speak your home language with your child. This is beneficial to everyone. It's beneficial to the families, it's beneficial to the school as well and to the child mostly. In the next presentation, you'll see Heriberto Velasquez uh, present on the difference between BICS and CALP. BICS is basic interpersonal communication, and CALP is cognitive academic language proficiency. As educators, we may hear children using BICS, common everyday uh, conversational language on the playground or in the dramatic play area, but we're really trying to guide children to using more cognitive academic language proficiency so that we can ensure they'll be ready for school. Another model that we have here is the bicycle model. Here we can see the bike, the little girls in the bike with the two wheels striding. This will require to be the bilingual student who has attained the language proficiency both BIGS and COMP, which is the goal of every teacher, of every parent, for our kids to succeed and continue. Now we're going to imagine that the bicycle has one tire that's lower than the other. What does that mean? That the language is not fully developed. One of those dimensions is not fully developed. And this bicycle won't move very solidly. And that's the same thing that will happen with our kids. If one language is not developed as the other, of course we're going to have those struggles with um, the base and the cop. And finally, if both tires are flat, similar to a student who has not sufficiently developed both Bigs and Pops won't be able to move forward or backwards. In the next section, you'll see a lively presentation by Esteban Morales. Esteban presents the really important idea that we shouldn't water down curriculum for second language learners. In fact, if anything, we should be providing them with the same challenging content that we provide for all children but it is important that we make age-appropriate adaptations for children who are learning a second language. I want to give you a, an, an image that a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago, I was in a panel for special education and there was a mother that used a metaphor that really impacted me and stuck with me until now. She was a mother from Virginia who has a Down syndrome a child and she has been advocating all her life, at that point her daughter was like 14 or 15, for inclusion and different strategies for her daughter. So as a mother she said, for me, the brain of my daughter is exactly like the wall 
when Italian people test the pasta. You know how Italian test the pasta? You throw it, if it's steak, it's ready, if it doesn't stick, you know. So she said, you need to throw as many spaghetti as my daughter bring, because we don't know what's gonna stick or what's not gonna stick. So a gifted classroom is always better than a remedial classroom. The richer the environment, the richer the experience is the best for the child. So in this case, the important thing is no sabemos lo que está pasando. El niño está aprendiendo, está absorbiendo todas esas imágenes, toda esa estructura. Es importante interactuar con él. Es importante que haya siempre la presencia de un adulto interactuando. Muchas veces pasa que nosotros tenemos la intención de interactuar cuando estamos al momento del círculo. Cuando el niño hacemos preguntas, tenemos una actividad, etc. Pero cuando el niño está, por ejemplo, jugando solo en el área de bloque, nosotros lo dejamos jugar solo. Cuando lo lógico sería que el niño está haciendo algo y nosotros fuéramos y quebráramos ese desequilibrio. Que hiciéramos algo que quebrara lo que él está haciendo para ponerlo en una crisis que la tenga que resolver y para que pueda contestarnos. Entonces, la intención de cómo hacemos crecer ese lenguaje es tremendamente importante. No va a pasar. It's not going to happen for osmosis. That believe that, oh, we speak Spanish at home and English at school and he will be fully bilingual. No. It's going to be a time when the target language is going to take off. Because at some point you need to develop literacy in both languages if you want it to be balanced. So it has to be intentional. At the end of the conference, we bring all the pieces of the puzzle together, linking learning, culture, play, language, so that teachers can begin to use this in the context of building emergent curriculum for children.